<clears throat> and I went to tell my commander about these two phone calls. And as I was starting to tell him about the calls, uh, we got indication on our, our panel. Uh, uh, lights and klaxons go off, and uh, we get a, all of a sudden our missiles start shutting down one by one. Uh, they, they went into what we call a no-go condition. In other words, they can't be launched. Um, and we lost nearly all of them. I, I recall we lost all of them. He, he recalls we lost maybe eight or nine. But either way, it was a very, very unusual occurrence. These systems were very reliable, mm -hmm. as you can imagine. This was the latest technology at the time. Um, uh, these missiles could not, well, had to be on online 24 hours a day, every day, and it was very rare that we lost any missile. Uh, in my three years there, uh, we, may have, we may have had a problem with one or two at a time, but mm -hmm. never in this order and never with a report upstairs it was some object mm -hmm. outside the front gate. So how many missiles were uh, deactivated? Uh, under uh, your canopy of uh, yeah, and at our launch control facility, uh, eight to ten, I'd say. Eight to ten. And again, uh, this happened something like forty years ago, uh, yeah. nearly forty years ago, and so uh, there, there's bound to be a little bit of uh, discrepancy as to memories. But mm -hmm. my commander is still alive. I speak to him often. He lives in Las Vegas. Uh, when we reported this event to the command post back at Malmstrom Air Force Base. We were about, um, I'd say, 80, 90 miles away from Malmstrom Air Force Base. <clears throat> uh, they told us that the same thing happened at another site. Uh, we were at Oscar Flight, same thing happened at Echo Flight. Uh, only they lost all 10. Hmm. And um, there were multiple witnesses uh, at their facility, as we had multiple witnesses. We had guards upstairs, but they had uh, maintenance people and security guards at the launch facilities. The launch facility is where the actual missile is located. Mm. Uh, it's in general, they're located about a one or two mile radius around the launch control facility. I noticed in, in your book, um, in, in both facilities, that their design uh, pretty in, with high integrity to prevent any type of intrusion electronically or even through uh, the, just just the, the system is all designed about uh, not getting to those missiles or the targeting systems or the guidance systems. Absolutely, and, yeah. yeah. As you can imagine and as is today, the, uh, our nuclear uh, weapons have to be very well protected, very well guarded. So we had, uh, like I say, the latest uh, technology to, to sense any kind of movement or any kind of intrusion where the missiles were located. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, uh, this was very, very unusual that we'd lose, uh, we lost nearly 20 missiles hmm. that day. At the same time, UFOs were reported. Uh, now the first thing I did when I got uh, uh, relieved of duty that, that morning as I go up to the stairs and or go up the elevator rather and uh, talk to the security guard that reported these things and he assured me that this was no in any way uh, joke that uh, what he told me was absolutely factual uh, and in addition there's nothing that they could have done upstairs to interfere with the weapon system you know, mm -hmm. these were they had no control at all upstairs. So, and th and then going back to the base and debriefing our commander, our squadron commander, when I re debriefed the story to him, he was white as a sheet. Assured me it was no exercise. Mm. There was no kind of air force exercise going on here, and he he didn't know what had happened. 